what's up guys? We are here in Tesoros de Colombia with Ivan or Ivan. Giving you a glimpse of some of the most beautiful frogs in the world. But I also want this video to shed some light on the importance of conservation and the work that Ivan does here at Tesoros, as well as the Active Conservation Alliance, which I'll give a little bit more detail behind later in the video. I also want to give a huge thanks to Dubia.com for making this Colombian expedition possible. More about them later on. Thank you for having me and uh, let's get showing you guys some awesome frogs and talk about conservation. I guess probably the most important thing to cover is where it all started. I'm a conservationist working in Colombia for 30 years, trying to stop extinctions of native species. You know, we are located in one of the most important biodiversity places in the world. Back in the 90s, I saw the big problem of the illegal smuggling of frogs, depleting the, the, the rainforest from these jewels. I thought that it would be great if Colombia would develop a place like this in which we can, you know, legally breed animals for the international demands and to be, you know, a very good comp uh, competition for the illegal smuggling that was, you know, huge at that moment. I got uh, together with a couple of, of persons that helped me starting this facility. It was very expensive to start it, very slow to get the licenses. And because of the difficulty of getting licenses and how much time it took, the people I've been started to Soros with elected to stop. Going with me because they were there were no hope mm. that the Soros could, you know, be a reality. But in the end, we are here. You are going to see some of the species that we are working with and well, you're, you're here to, to show the world what we are doing. That's the main goal here, you guys, is to share some of the species that they're selling plenty of and exporting completely legally to places like Canada, the US, the UK, all over the place. Let's go take a look at some of those frogs now. I had a blast at Tesoros. It was one of the coolest places I've ever had the pleasure of visiting. So many cool frogs. It was fantastic seeing where my frogs originated from. And it was very gracious of Ivan to even let me in, let alone film everything. Now, it wasn't my typical reptile room tour style of video where I walk tank to tank. Honestly, in a facility like this, it wouldn't have even been feasible to do something like that because there's so many tanks, so many frogs, and so many tanks where the frogs weren't even visible just because they have so much leaf litter and objects in the tank to hide behind. And not to mention, some of the frog species are pretty shy. So I did the best I could to get the frogs that I really wanted to see. And believe me, there are some cool things coming. I didn't leave any species on the screen because I don't know if it's super public. So if you can work it out yourself, by all means, go ahead. There is some very cool new morphs and species coming to the hobby in probably 2025, but no date has been set yet. So one of the keys of conservation and something that most people don't understand is the timelines for everything. I know you've shared a few examples with me and I would love to share with everybody just how long it takes from you know the paperwork to getting the animals to producing the animals to exporting them. Yes, we started the Soros, you know, the paperwork, the first paperwork in 2000 six and uh, we got the full license to export legally the seven species that we asked uh, the license for in 2015 so it's almost 10 years waiting for the license to be uh, able to be used and then for example the new species that we want to release in the international legal market we have started uh, dealing with the paperwork in 2016 and we have been investing since then in bringing them into tesoros having them you know do all the research on a husbandry, mm -hmm. breeding them, and hopefully this year we are going to get all the commercial permits. It is important to share a little bit of like the costs and stuff. What what exactly goes into you know getting these frogs? Obviously, there's paperwork and government and all that stuff that most people don't understand, and I certainly don't still. But yeah. <laughs> you know, just the the workers that work here and and the research that goes in here. Can you share a little bit of that? The license we have is one, is one of the most difficult license to get in Colombia. It's called environmental license and, and, and only uh, high impact industries will have to deal 
to get one of these. Normally, it's, the, it's, the, it's, it's designed to be granted to mining companies, large oil companies, wow. you know, infrastructure companies. It's very really <laughs> difficult for us to keep up with the, with the costs associated to that license. And then also we have to have a, a full operation. So we have 11 persons working all year round. We have lawyers, wow. we have uh, environmental engineers, we have vets, biologists, animal scientists, and it's a full operation. I mean, it's not something that is a product of a hobby of one person that keeps, no. you know, by himself. It's a company. This is a full industry that you're really maintaining at, at Tesoros. Exactly, here. and it's yeah. really, really expensive, you know, to run Tesoros. I appreciate the transparency, and it's something that certainly most people on YouTube and most people that see this video don't really fully understand. And, and I'd be lying if I fully understood it, because I certainly don't either, but I think it is very important to share with everybody here that this isn't just a frog manufacturing facility. This is truly conservation and getting land and paying the people in the community here to look after Tesoros. That's why I wanted to come here. That's why I wanted to see you and see this. It's something that if you can and you're looking for frog, it's the perfect place to come. Thanks a lot. Yes, we need the support of everyone involved in the hobby because we are going to do the, the conservation that is needed to be done based on the support of you guys buying legal frogs and avoiding at any cost the illegal ones that are depleting our forest of, of these jewels. Something that I think is very important to share with the viewers and, and my subscribers and whatnot is is how Tesoros actually helps conservation and helps these frogs in the wild. First, we are stopping the illegal traffic by producing strong, very well adapted uh, individuals bred in captivity legally mm -hmm. with certifications. Replace those that were usually or yearly stolen from our rainforest. So those folks are going to be there and not going to be uh, picked up by somebody that is that, that, that will supply the demand. Second, we have five different projects in the field that are helping communities that are interested in, in preserving some of these species. Some of them including buying uh, land for creating or enlarging reserves that some foundations are running like for example in Nariño with the Silvatica. Mm -hmm. We have been doing education in different parts of the country. We are supporting uh, frog festivals in different places where it's important the education of the children. Frog festival is an is a educational day in which there are some workshops, some conference lectures given to locals about conservation. Cool. To highlight the, the importance of preserving these frogs as a key and charismatic species for, of, the, of the forest that is surrounding these communities. And the, the, the kids understand that these animals are more important in the forest than in, the, in a plastic bag for a person that is going to take them out of the country. Yeah. And also, we're helping some of these communities to develop a permanent income by the activities that they do. For example, helping the, the coffee producers in Tolima. We're cool. helping them to export the coffee. It's been really difficult because there's a lot of registration and, and we have to learn about coffee, coffee. exportation. <laughs> But, but, but I mean, see, if you want the community to, to, to protect the species that are going to probably become extinct in the next 10 years, they need to have something more than just a message about not enlarging the coffee production area and respect the forest. You know, they need money. Yeah. So we are helping them to get more money from their coffee yeah. so they can, you know, stay in the same area. Yeah. And, and solve their, their needs. Now, just before Ivan starts talking more about the Active Conservation Alliance, I wanted to thank our sponsor for this video, Dubia.com. If you have anywhere near the amount of animals that you've seen in this video, you'll need somehow to feed them. Thankfully, Dubia.com's got you. You can find anything from Dubias to fruit flies on there, which you can actually feed your beautiful Phyllobates terribilis, as well as any other animals that you may have. Now, if you are keeping Phyllobates terribilis in your room, then they also offer an arboreal enclosure that you can set up perfect for dart frogs. If you don't currently keep dart frogs, you should probably fix that. But Dubia.com carries an assortment of different feeders for all kinds of reptiles and amphibians, as well as a huge line of different enclosures. So make sure to go check out the link in the description down below. And we'll continue with Ivan talking about the wonderful work that the Active Conservation Alliance does. Now we have this the, the, the support from the Active Conservation Alliance. It's a foundation and a non-profit organization. It's working because it's active conservation, as we said. We, we're, we are hands-on and solving problems, practical problems of conservation, making the locals become the conservationists yeah. instead the uh, being the ones that are that, you know, creating the problem mm -hmm. of the conservation, yeah. which is the, the, the best way to deal with these problems. Absolutely, with, yeah. I mean, with species like this. They are, they have a very small distribution range and can, can uh, disappear without 
any any notice in, in a few years. Yeah, a blink of an eye, you guys. These frogs are found in tiny, tiny patches of land that literally one collection could, in theory, take a whole yeah. locality of that specific species. We would never know about it, and it would be gone to science. So it's it's really important to do this kind of work and, exactly. and to share this knowledge with you guys. You guys have seen them a few times this episode, but I did want to show off kind of the full-length clips of some of the coolest frogs that we saw while in Tesoros. Something to keep in mind for the future is that this Tesoros video is not the only video that I'll be making from Colombia. There are a couple incredible adventures to come, so make sure you click that subscribe button, like the video. Be sure to tune in to the next few videos that you see on this channel because we are approaching 100k and these do not disappoint. I'll leave a little bit of a trailer just before we say goodbye to Ivan. Check it out. Ivan, I want to thank you very much for having us. Um, it was very special. I know this is a privilege and, and I very much take that to heart and respect what you do here. And it's very cool to see where a lot of my frogs have come from. So I want to thank you very much for having me, for filming especially. And uh, I look forward to seeing some koi near me very soon. <laughs> <laughs> You're very welcome. You, you can come whenever you want. And, and yes, please uh, send a message of become a supporter. Let's make this hobby completely legal. Thank you very much, Yvonne. See you next time. Okay. <laughs>